Today on Two Crazy Ketos, we talk about our weight loss journey. And why we started a YouTube channel. We'll start the conversation right, right after, after this. this. What's up, family? I'm Rachel. And I'm Joe. And we are Two, Two Crazy, Crazy Ketos. If you're new to our channel, welcome. Here on Two Crazy Ketos, we do different things like product reviews, recipe videos. We talk about various keto topics. And then once a week, we sit down on the couch for Keto on the Couch. We just kind of talk about what's going on in our lives for the week. You can find us on different social media platforms like Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. And we also have a website, which is twocrazyketos.com. And that's where you're going to find all of our different recipes. Now, we do upload at least five new videos every single week. So make sure you subscribe to our channel. And don't forget to hit the little bell icon and that way every single time we upload a new video you'll be alerted to it yeah so a lot of people have been messaging us asking us like to tell our story we did we did about a year ago on our very first video on the channel mm -hmm. and like 250 videos ago yeah it's buried like 250 videos deep and honestly like the production is like horrible the coloring is horrible my hair's a different color <laughs> your hair As is always. always a different color so today we're going to spend a little bit of time kind of talking about like why we started our channel and our weight loss journey. It's a throwback Thursday when yep. we're taping this. So yep. we're going to throw back. It's a little hard. I'm going to like definitely need this root beer for the whole thing. <laughs> I need like a little bit of sweetness in my mouth because like going back and thinking about what used to be is kind of hard still. Like right. it's hard to think about like where we came from mm -hmm. and... Um, how sad I was for so long. Right. I can tell you, I definitely can relate to that because for me, I've been heavy my entire life or I was heavy my entire life. Although I still look at myself sometimes in the mirror and I think like I'm heavy, but that's another video. Yeah. But I mean, I was heavy my entire life. I mean, and I've talked about like my earliest memories of being heavy were sixth grade, but I know I was even heavy earlier. I mean, yeah. I've seen pictures of myself when I was like six and seven years old and I was skinny. But then I very quickly put weight on. So, But my entire life and my whole adult life, I was always like obese, like morbidly obese. I was chubby my whole life or always on the verge. You know, like you would get into like third grade, fourth grade. And I was like, mm, she's probably going to be a heavy middle schooler. And that's, right. that's kind of like what I looked like. Like I was always you know, whatever the girl's clothing size was, I was always at the end and like trying to make it happen. It was always like tight in my arms, like every dress I ever put on. And um, it was challenging. And then when I got to middle school, I was, I was really heavy and I felt heavy. Like I felt the weight of being a chubby middle schooler. Right. And an Uber nerd. That didn't help. <laughs> like, mm, be like all about homework and be chubby. Like that was... It was hard. Middle school was probably some of the worst years of my entire life until I got into adulthood when I found out that being a chubby, a chubby wife and mom is also very painful to right. be. Yeah, for me, I mean, I like I, I was heavy in middle school. I didn't have a lot of friends, but it was always reminding me with the friends that I did have that I was heavy. Then I got to high school and my weight was always up and down, up and down because I went to Boy Scout camp and I was like a camp counselor when I was in high school. And so anytime I went away to the Boy Scout camp, which was in upstate New York, I would drop a bunch of weight because you had to walk up and down mountains all day. Yeah. So I would come home, start the next year of high school. Like, you know, I even remember then being like a 36, 38. So I would be at my lower weight for high school. But then by the end of the year, I'd be like way back up. But I was always the fat guy. Yeah. When I was in high school, um, I got down to a size 10. And that was probably just the smallest I had been in my entire, like for a very long time. And what had happened was I just got like super active. I was very passionate about becoming a journalist. I was like all about that. And I got like an internship in high school, uh, working for a local newspaper. I worked very hard on our school newspaper and I, I just didn't have a lot of time to eat. And right. so I started noticing like pounds coming off and then I thought, hmm, it looks like the way to lose weight would be to like calorie restrict. And that kind of got in my brain. So when I started to eat again, um, I was always in my back part of my mind. The only way that you're ever going to be thin again is to reduce your calories to like as very little amount as you could possibly get by with and right. still be alive. <laughs> 
Yeah, I know that's something you've struggled with, even like through our marriage. Like, yeah. right? I gotta, I gotta not eat today, or I gotta like lower my calories down really, really low, or you know. Yeah, like if I had a goal, it was all about like I'm not eating until that event. So it was really bad if it was like a week away, a month away, <laughs> right? Because you're just like not not eating as, and that's your strategy because you don't know what to do with food, and I think food. For myself, it wasn't something that my parents really did. Honestly, I think it was something I self-medicated with. It was like if I was happy, I wanted an ice cream to celebrate it. If I was sad, I wanted to punish myself with food or console myself with food. I just had a really unhealthy relationship with food my entire life. My bad relationship with food really started like once I got my driver's license. Yeah. Because when I was little and I was growing up, we didn't have a lot of like those store-bought treats in the house. We didn't have like store-bought cookies. We didn't eat like the sweetened, you know, cereals. Like, of course, now we know that like even the unsweetened things like Rice Krispies are no good for you. But we didn't have a lot of that stuff, like the Lucky Charms and stuff. But we had cookies in the house. Either my grandmother like shipped them to us from Florida because we were living in New York. Or um, we made our own. We made our own banana breads and carrot cakes. We even baked our own breads in the house. Mm -hmm. So I didn't get a lot of that kind of food as a little kid, like no fast food for the most part. So when I got my driver's license, I kind of went off the deep end because it was kind of like now you have a little bit of control. Like I had a job. I had a driver's license. I could go get McDonald's if I want. I can go get Wendy's if I want. If I want a candy bar or something like that, I can get it because I had access to it. Yeah. And then when I went off to college, it was even worse because I was living on my own. So it was like, oh, wait a second. Like, I don't have to make my own tomato sauce. I can buy a jar of ragu. Right. You know? And so that's where my weight just went up and up and up and up was when I was in college and like really once I got my driver's license. We didn't really have a bunch of snacks in the house because we didn't have like a lot of money growing up in my yeah. family. And, you know, those kind of things like Dunkaroos and all of like the, the cool cookies, Capri Suns, all that kind of stuff that like Saturday morning cartoons advertise. Right. Like we were going to put family money into that. My parents just made meals, you know, like we ate real food, which That's is too. thanks mom and dad. Cause like that was actually a good thing. Right. Um, but when I got a driver's license, it was the same. I, I kind of measured like success and independence on the fact that I could go through that drive through as much as I wanted to. And then you took somebody who had a very unhealthy relationship with food already and was an emotional eater and was a reward and punishment eater. And then you put her in a, the closed setting of a car right. where all, like I could eat the entire meal in the car. And the only human contact and accountability I had to deal with was that person that worked for McDonald's that was just taking my money very quickly and, and then just giving me my food. Right. And then that was it. Like if we ever had like a check yourself out lane at McDonald's, like I would have been even bigger, <laughs> honestly. So let's talk a little bit about our, our like weight loss stuff and I'll, I'll start. So like I said, college is where I really started going up and that's where I really started trying to get serious like on losing weight. And that's where I really started my dieting. I mean, obviously as a kid, like my mom was always harping on me about my weight and stuff and worried about like, you're going to get diabetes and that kind of stuff. Because back then, like really the only people who had diabetes were either like old really people. old people or really, really heavy children. Like yeah. you would get like, you know, childhood diabetes, but it was rare. rare. Like you had to be like, you know, a quadruple extra large, like 200 pounds overweight. You didn't yeah. see skinny people getting diabetes like you do now. No. And so she always worried about that. But when I got into college and I started realizing like, hey, I'm no longer doing the summer camp thing. I'm no longer exercising I'm, I'm, and the weight's just coming on, especially because of my independence. I started doing things like going to Jenny Craig, started going to the gym and my weight would go up and down. I'd lose a bunch, I'd gain a bunch. I'd lose a bunch, I'd gain a bunch. And it was this constant yo-yo diet for me. And I ended up topping off at somewhere around like 285 pounds. Wow. But it would be like 285 pounds and then I'd get down to like 250, then I'd go up to like 270. Then I, I mean, the lowest I ever was before like keto was 230 pounds. But I even know then like I was still bigger than when I was like 240 pounds. I even remember when my first son was born, I was meeting with like a life insurance person and they're like, well, if you could get your weight under 260 pounds, um, we can lower the rate. And I was thinking to myself, like, I am under 260. Oh. But because I yo-yo diet so much, 
like I looked a lot bigger. And so like even like we we have some pictures of what I looked like when I was just 260 pounds and I was bigger there than I yeah. weighed 285 pounds. It was almost just like air and bloating. And I mean like bigger size wise. I was wearing bigger pants. I was wearing bigger shirts. So and that's why like I never realized like how big I got because I wasn't paying attention to the fact that like hey, I'm wearing a 44 pants. I was looking at the scale going, I only weigh 265 pounds. Yeah. You're like, I'm 20 pounds lighter than I used to be. When I got out of college, I was like between 170 and 180 and I was about to get married. And so I did the typical like just stop eating until the function. Like I think a lot of brides do. Yep. And I got down to 160 pounds. But as soon as the honeymoon was over, like the honeymoon was over. I, I was suddenly like a wife and... I was cooking meals and I was, I never have known how to cook. So I was just doing a lot of processed food and that packed the weight on. And then when I got pregnant with Caleb, it was just up from there really, because um, first you gain the baby weight and then you have the baby. And I actually went from being like 230 pounds pregnant to 213 pounds in that first like, you know, month or two when you like lose like that initial weight. But then I went back up again because, um, I don't know. I just, as I processed like this new role as mother, I, I just handled it with food. Like I handled everything with food. And then as he became a toddler and now he's eating food, well, now I'm making macaroni and cheese. And as a toddler, you know how it is. They, They eat like two bites out of the box and then I don't want to let the rest of the box go to waste. And so I was eating macaroni and cheese and chicken nuggets and hot dogs and like corn dogs, like all of the things that a little kid would eat as, as a mom, I was eating everything. Well, it just becomes super convenient. You feed it to him, feed it to myself, right? Same thing with McDonald's. Like he was super aware of what that M was like way before he knew a lot of other, you know, symbols. He knew what Mickey Mouse and McDonald's were. Right. Because it was easy to like, Feed us both. Mm-hmm. Now, how much did you weigh when we got married? you remember? When we got married, I had slimmed down again because we are a second marriage yep. in a blended family. And uh, when we were, I was probably like 230 okay. when we got married. I was like a ton of fun. When we got married, I was, that was on my lower end. I think I had just gotten done losing a bunch of weight like through a little bit of exercise and I think I did Jenny Craig with one of my friends if I remember right but that was like a year prior but I was on the lower end of my weight and I think I weighed about 240 pounds in that picture I'll put the wedding picture up here I just remember shopping for a wedding dress quote unquote and opting for just like a blue dress I just could not stomach the thought of going and shopping for you know a traditional wedding dress Mm -hmm. and having to pick out like a size 22, 24. I believe I was in a size 24 for for my wedding dress. That was like the blue wedding dress. And I was so happy. Like I had truly met the love of my life and I was excited to get married. And what I loved about you is when you dated me, you never knew me as skinny. No. And when, when we dated, I was very heavy. And when we got married and when you decided to marry me, like we, I was not skinny. So mm-hmm. I always loved the fact that Joe liked me for who I was. He liked the Rachel I on the inside. I still like you. I like you too. <laughs> but that was important, you know, because right. it wasn't about, you know, what was going on just on the outside. Right. So we started yeah, so our little family. I think, like I said, I think I weighed about 240 pounds around like two, 230, two, 235 to 240. I don't remember the exact number, obviously. It's like 11 years ago, 12 years ago. Yeah. But um, I know I started just slowly gaining weight on during marriage because obviously you, you're in your marriage thing. Let's yes. face it, right? You get married, like I, it doesn't matter as much anymore. I found the person with yeah. me and we were always busy. We always had stuff going on. We were trying to blend our families and... I think for both of us, the weight just kind of crept on. Yeah. And I topped out at 285. Well, and we were like, I think any working, you know, couple. Right. And you're trying to like, you know, make your moments with your kids like as fun as possible because you kind of feel guilty for whenever you're not with them. Mm -hmm. And so we would go out to eat a lot and we would get, have pizza night. Especially when on the nights when we didn't have our kids, when they were with their other parents. Yes. Like on Sundays, like we had, I mean, I think back about like how we didn't die. From what we were eating. I mean, no kidding me. Talk about being super honest. So we would get up in the morning. We would go to church. 
From church, we would go to Golden Corral for an all-you-can-eat breakfast and eat until we couldn't move anymore. That's right. right? Then we would go home, we'd take a nap, and then we would order Outback Steakhouse for dinner, Mm -hmm. take home, because we didn't want anybody to see what we were eating, and we would each get a Blooming Onion. Yep. And then I'm not sure we only ate sides, and then we would usually split like some wings and the fries, yeah. and then each have a chocolate thunder from down under. Yeah. And that was in addition to if we snacked on anything else throughout the day. And I think I figured it out one day. We were eating like on those Sundays, like probably twelve to fifteen thousand calories. Easily. Like how we weren't bigger than we were is beyond me. But we were I think we were eating because of our depression of like the kids not being around and everything else. Yeah. And um, and then when the kids were around, you know, wh- whatever you our family... You wanted to praise them. You wanted to praise them, so let's reward it. Like, who wants to, you know, go to... We I remember how excited we were when we went to Universal Studios, and they had the thing where you could just... All you could eat through the park as many times as yeah, you could Yeah, it was like eat. $25 a person, as many times as you can eat. And we took advantage of that. I feel that. like we broke them. Yeah. Right? That's probably why they don't have that pass anymore. Yeah. Seriously. So um, I think now you can do it, but you can only eat once an hour. Yeah. Because we were going was, to each place. Yeah, it was really bad. So, so what was your top off weight? My top off was 255 pounds. Okay. I mean, that was the last time that I weighed because I'm pretty sure I was bigger than that, but like I wasn't even approaching the scale back then. And you know, you do, um, when we talk about like having these crazy binge days on like the weekends, what you do is Monday through Friday, you try to recover, right? Like you're just, and that's what we were doing. We would try to restrict We'd diet all week. Exactly. But then it was useless cause you'd still gain. Right. I mean, it was terrible. So I remember, so you topped out at 255 pounds and then you got sick. And decided, like, this is it. You couldn't eat for, like, three or four days. You were so sick. I got and this stomach flu. you decided you were flu. going to, like, do something about your weight. Exactly. And this is something that I talked to a lot of people about. And that is, if you're not ready to do something about your weight, nobody is going to make you do anything about your weight. Like, if you're contemplating this because other people have put pressure on you to, to start losing weight, you might as well just forget it now. It's like trying to make a toddler, like, potty train right they'll do it when they're ready that's right but when you are ready no one can stop you when you are legitimately ready no one will be able to to stop you it won't matter that other people in your house are eating things that you can't eat it just won't matter because you you're like i'm in this for myself and joe never made me try to like lose weight but when i got sick and i got the stomach flu i thought this is my shot I've had a couple days where I haven't eaten, like it's time to reset my life. And right. and so the first thing I started to deal with and probably confused you totally was whenever there was like different trigger um, hours throughout the day when I would just eat. She was living in the bathtub. I would just go in the bathtub. For hours. I mean hours. Like I thought something, what is wrong? I mean she would like lay in the bathtub for like four straight hours. Because that was, that's how large the eating window was that I had to close. Like that I had to shut down. I needed to disconnect and basically as soon as I would get home from work, I would just graze the entire time while he was preparing dinner and I can't even believe how much like I could Pork down. Right. I mean, we've always talked about how I can eat you under the table. Like, seriously. Like, I could eat competitively easily. So that was, I don't even know how long ago at this point. I guess it was about six years ago, right? Yeah. And so Rachel lost a bunch of weight. And I actually joined her in the weight loss. And we got down, like, really thin. I mean, we doing, it was my thinnest. I got down to, like, 230. But we were doing low calorie. Really low calorie. Like very high carb. Especially you. Yeah, very high carb. So what were you? You were eating, she was eating oatmeal and yogurt. I was eating 150 calories per meal of yogurt. Right. So that oh, would no, be. Of, of. I'm sorry, of oatmeal. Of oatmeal. So that wound up being, what, 450 calories a day. Right. And then one time a day, I would eat 50 calories worth of Greek yogurt. Right. So 450. So what is it? 500, 500 calories. calories. So I was, that was my calorie restriction. And it was really silly. I mean, it's like anything when you do like the cabbage soup diet, the grapefruit diet, like any of these one trick pony, you know, 
you get sick of it, but I was so afraid to go off of it. The so problem was it that worked, was it. right? It worked. So she dropped from like initially that 255 pounds. I don't know what your lowest weight was, but I remember your lowest size was you got into like a size two slash four. Yeah. And that was over like a period of like eight months. I had gotten down to 160 pounds. And that's important to put in perspective too, because we talked about, I was 160 pounds and I was a size 10. Now, because stuff shifts around, I was... 160 pounds but a size like four two like right. somewhere in there so so then the problem was is it that over that eight months you decided like you got really thin you looked really good mm-hmm. i mean i have pictures of what you looked like back then yeah but then you were afraid to gain it back on so you just kept eating that much that's only thing that i ate so i missed out on birthdays and parties and like all kinds of things I just because I was just eating oatmeal and I was certainly afraid to share my secret because I felt like everybody's gonna be like you're an idiot what are you doing and I was starting to experience what you would imagine I would experience with not having the proper minerals and nutrients like you're not eating vegetables and you're not getting any vitamins like you're only get getting what this like carb rich oatmeal could provide for you. And mm-hmm. I wasn't worrying about it being GMO or not. Right. And so we were buying the cheapest oatmeal we could possibly buy. Oh my goodness, yes. Yeah. So my hair was falling out, my teeth were having problems, and I had uh, headaches. I had terrible plantar fasciitis in my feet. I so even though I was lighter on my feet, I was just in pain with right. every step. Lots of inflammation. And so what ended up happening was Rachel just eating only that started putting the weight back on slowly. And then because we weren't eating together, I had no accountability. So I was starting to put weight back on. And that's where, like, so she went, you went from that being thin back up like, to like 100 and what, 70, 180 pounds? Yeah, so I was thin and sick looking for a portion of time. To the point where I, I would, everybody in our family was like, thought she had like anorexia or something. There was no color in my face. Right. I mean, it was just, my skin was terrible. And then you were, yeah, you were gradually um, gaining weight. But then I started gaining weight even on the oatmeal. Right. So even though I was super diligent, I was super, you know, calorie restricting, it wasn't helping. I was gaining weight. So I went from the 160 up to 170 and beyond. And I got really, really scared because I had to face the fact that, like, how was I going to restrict anymore? This obviously right. doesn't work. I didn't know that the carbs were turning into sugar. And the problem is, is you had completely screwed up your metabolism. And it's taken you several years to kind of fix that at this yeah. point. And so what ended up happening was I ended up topping off at like 280 pounds. I don't know what your top off was before keto. Yeah, I want to say. I guess it was like 180 or something. Like yeah, that, right? I want to say like I weighed at like 170. I think it was heavier than that. It's just that, again, I shut Rock down. Out in your mind. Yeah. Yeah. So what ended up happening with me, the way we found keto was I actually um, got into a weight loss bet. At with, church. With people at church. Started going to a gym to do CrossFit. Was really enjoying it. Had a little bit of success. Um, lost about 15 pounds, um, but I was having to do it privately because, like, I had so many health issues. I had, yeah. like, pins in my ankle. I had arthritis in my elbow from dislocating my elbow. You couldn't I do had, all the like, exercises. I couldn't do everything, so I had everything had to be, like, personalized to me. And what ended up happening was the owner of the gym closed down the gym. Mm-hmm. And we were getting a discount because it was, like, a church discount. Mm-hmm. And so I couldn't afford CrossFit anymore. And I was like, what am I going to do? I've got to do something. Because first of all, I was like, I've got to win this weight loss bag. Right. <laughs> uh, but more importantly for me, it was, like, I was I knew I was on death's door because yeah. – like, I had high blood pressure, and more importantly, I was in the middle of lacrosse season, or just starting lacrosse season, I think it was, because it was February. Right. And I came home from a game, and I looked at Rachel, and I said, this is my last season. Like, I can no longer officiate because I can't move, because I have pins in my ankle, and I, the arthritis was so bad, and I was living on painkillers, and I was living on arthritis medication. And I said to her, this is the last season, because I need an ankle replacement, and the problem is an ankle replacement is going to be at least a year recovery and probably more considering my weight. Yeah. And so I was like, I have to do something. Because it, it took a lot for her even to say, like, you can go do CrossFit. You were even against me doing CrossFit. Because yeah, like, it's, it's cost money. Yeah. It's a lot of money. It's expensive for us. And so I was like, what can I do? And I started researching and I'd heard about keto. I tried Atkins like years ago. Me like, too. Like, you know, I'm talking about like 20 years ago I had tried Atkins and I'd lost some weight on it. And then the second I had a carb, I ballooned back up. 
So I was I heard a little bit about keto, and this is like over two and a half years ago at this point. And I just said, okay, like I'm gonna try this. And I remember going to you and you're like, this is silly, don't do this. But at the same time, I was like, dang it, he's gonna totally do this. Cause like I know when Joe has mentioned something, he's already That's like definitely it's, true. it's in the midst of I happening. I figured out how I'm gonna make this happen if I bring it up. So, um, and I thought, here I am like continuing to reduce my oatmeal consumption. I think I had knocked out the yogurt at that time and you know, try to save 50 calories. And so I thought, I'm going to be miserable if I don't go on this with him. It may not work, but it, but I know it's going to hurt our marriage if I see him eating delicious fatty food and I'm... Eating oatmeal. Eating oatmeal. So what ended up happening was I had, after the first 30 days, tremendous success. Like, I lost like some... I, I don't even remember the exact amount at this point. I want to say it was like 25 pounds in the first month. Uh, and... Rachel didn't lose a lot. You lost like a couple of pounds. Well, okay, so there's two dynamics going on. Number one, that really was a win that I lost anything compared right. to my former life because I was at least able to eat food and mm -hmm. enjoy life that way. However, yeah, I I think I went too far on the snacks. I like leaned too heavily on multiple, multiple meals a day. And, you know, it was keto food, but there was a lot of it. A lot of nuts, a ton of cheese, and so um, we didn't know a lot about keto because no. there wasn't as much information as there is now. I mean, yeah. back then, like you had like Dr. Westman, uh, you had Dr. Berg was starting to talk about it, but even his videos weren't super old. He had only recently changed over to like really talking about keto, and you had Keto Connect talking about stuff. Yeah, and there wasn't as much information out there. And I think now looking back, I think one of the other issues that you had was you had screwed up your metabolism yeah, so much. Definitely. It didn't matter what diet you were doing. Like the fact that you lost any weight because you went from eating five to 700 calories to immediately like figuring out your macros on a macro calculator and going, hey, I can eat 1400 calories a day. Right. So the fact that you did not at least gain weight, let alone that you lost a couple of pounds. Miracle. Is that's a testimony to, to keto though, because like it's taken a long time to fix that screw up of metabolism which is why we push for like really the more I've learned about it like reverse dieting like when you are done dieting slowly increasing your calories back up and when you're trying to lose weight slowly decreasing them and not like hey in the first month dropping 400 calories a day because you don't no. have any place to go after that that's exactly right and, and I'm evidence of that right so I went off went back to calorie restricting that after was a month. so fun right? but right. you stuck with it I stuck with we it we got through the holidays yeah, so I lost, over the period of eight months, I lost about 80 pounds. And I just remember going from like a size 44, and I was super happy I was in a size 34. You look good. And thank you. And more importantly, though, I felt good. Yeah. You know? And I was like happy with my sizes, and I was happy with my clothes, and I was like, okay, I think that I I know enough about carbs now that I was never going to eat white bread again. I was never going to eat sugar again. But my plan was that I would eventually like once a week, twice a week do I guess what people would call like a cyclical keto diet. Where yeah. I was going to incorporate things like sweet potatoes, maybe some french fries once in a while or mm -hmm. something like that. So like what most people would consider healthy carbs, maybe some brown rice. Not a lot, but just once in a while. Yeah. And so Christmas came. And he tried it. I, I had actually, while we were waiting for Christmas, gotten down to 200 pounds. I do remember that. And um, Christmas came and I said, okay, I'm going to go off just this one day. Mm -hmm. And I had like one slice of pie, small slice too. And I had some macaroni and cheese, which I know those aren't the healthy carbs, but it was Christmas. I was like, I have restricted myself for so long, hadn't had sugar for over eight months. And... I felt like garbage the next so day. So they were going to reward yourself for good behavior by giving yourself some sugar, but it wasn't. It was a punishment. It was it was a total punishment. It was literally within an hour, like, I don't know, I had the worst headaches. It was, again, restricted myself from sugar for so long, and I was so used to before that always being on sugar. It's not and then fun anymore. The next morning I woke up with, like, headaches and cramping, and I'm like, that's it. I'm staying on keto, and... You know, had to go through the keto flu all over again for that just little bit of carbs. But I think I had so well adapted mm -hmm. to keto. And then what really put me on top was, again, for almost 30 years, I have taken arthritis pain, arthritis medication and painkiller. And I finally looked at Rachel and I was like, 
huh, I just realized that I got through all of football season and never took a painkiller. And I never took arthritis medication. It was like a miracle. And like I'm walking better and I'm pain free. Suddenly. And so that was like the trigger where like this is your lifestyle the rest yeah, of your life. Yeah, because the weight loss right then for Joe took a back seat to the health. Right. Like the good health that you were experiencing. So we got through the holidays and then in January, I typically fast the entire month of January just to like give, just tie that to God because I have always had such a terrible relationship with food. Like I just am like, you know what, Lord, I'm just not going to eat It's the thing you value most. It is. So I, I want to give that to God. I want a direction for the year. So um, I, I just... I just tied the month of January. That's just what I do. Now and I want to. I want to make it clear that she's not like tithing like no calories at all. What she would do was like do a slim fast or an ensure or something like that. It would be so. like basically like one keto chow a day. Yeah, but not keto chow at the time. No, but not, that kind of a thing, like one yeah. shake a day. Yeah. So um, at the end of January, as we got closer to the end of January, Joe said, "Look, you're probably already in ketosis anyway." Why don't you give it another shot? Right. Just try it. And so I told him, okay, but I'm not tracking anything. If I do this, you're going to have to cook all my food and like figure out my macros because clearly if I try to handle this myself, um, I'm going to be terrible at it. Right. And so he was like, deal. So I went ahead in February, excuse me, of like 2018, went back on and committed to it and have not looked back since. Yep. And it's been an awesome journey. So, I mean, I know. Now, here's the thing. So, while you were doing that, I continued to, although I wasn't trying to, I continued to lose weight. I was trying to figure out my macros to, like, maintain. And then, I like, I had gotten below 200. And I was like, all I want to do is see 199. And I was, like, right there. Yeah. And I was like, okay, good. I'm here. And then I was like, wow. Like, the next thing I knew, I turned around. I was like, 192. I'm like, wow. I wonder what it would be like to be under 192, under 190. Yeah. And that's where I ended up to really at where I am now and where I teeter anywhere between 180 and 184 pounds for the most part. Like, obviously, weight changes every single day. But I've been since then the same, pretty much the same weight and the same size, wearing a 29, 30, 31, depending on who makes it and that kind of stuff. Yeah. But yeah, that was what, so Rachel said to me that you have to cook, do all my cooking, you have to track everything. And I was like super happy to, because number one, it makes it better for me with cooking in the house, because I had a partner in this now. And I, it's one of the reasons we started this channel is because some people don't have a partner. Right. right? Some people don't have someone that could be like, hey, help me out. I'm struggling. Hey, we want to be your partner. Yes. And so, like, I figure, like, we get to do this together now. We get to eat the same kind of foods. We can, like, praise each other. We can, like, hold each other accountable. So it was like my pleasure to be able to do all the cooking and make sure we were eating the right things. And that's why we felt very strongly to take it a step further and start our Facebook family group because we were like, we need even more interaction. You need even more like ability for people who maybe don't have a partner. Maybe they do and that's great, but if they don't, they can interact and like share recipes and you know share congratulations over right. both scale and non-scale victories. Now, I wanted to talk about, before we moved in really into the channel, so you did, now we're in February 1st, 2018. What size were you at the end of your 30-day fast of only eating probably like 400 calories a day? I want to say I was at like, at that point, like a size 8. Okay, so I have a picture up right now. Okay, so then I remember what happened was at the end of 30 days, you had, you had made the commitment then you weren't going to weigh. Yes. Okay. So at the end of February, you weighed and you were down like three pounds. Which was nothing in my and brain. you were like, I'm ready to quit again and I wouldn't let you. Yep. But what size were you? By that time, I was like a size six teetering on a size four. But that right. was only three pounds. It was only three pounds. And then like two weeks later, I, re I remember this so vividly. We went to Hollister. You told me to go get you a pair of shorts. It was a size four. And I grabbed the four and then I brought them back and you're like, these are big. And so I brought you, I was like, well, I brought you a two as well. And you're like, there's no way I'm fitting in them. And they were big on you. Yeah. But you had only lost like two more pounds. So that's the thing with keto. Like, and I mean, we say it a lot, but I think it's worth just continuing to push that forward because I think there's a lot of women who feel very frustrated that they're not seeing a lot of scale movement, right. but but it's happening in your clothes. Which is why I was bringing that up because I mean, we were having like arguments. I remember like she was like crying depressed on the floor. Like I've only lost four pounds. How is this possible? I'm going, and you kept threatening, like I'm going back to my oatmeal 
And yeah, I was like, like a... but you went from a size eight to a size four. Yeah. And she's like, but I didn't lose any pounds. But I'm like, but you went from a size eight to a size four or whatever it was at the time. I mean, but we have it in our brain. Just like, you know, you we've had this, you know, standard American diet in our brain for so long that we feel weird and like we should feel guilty that we're not, right. you know, adhering to that. And it's the same thing. If you don't, you've got in your brain what you think you're, the perfect number is, like what it means, like the BMI when it says, well, if you're you're obese, if you're don't ever look at that stuff. This thing. I mean, right now I'm still considered obese, right at this moment, because 135 pounds is what I'm su- supposed to weigh according to that right. in my height and age and all that good stuff. So, and I'm 100 and what 43 today. But you get again, and you go up and down and up and down and up and down. You do. But you're at one of your thinnest as far as size-wise that I can remember. And it, what's funny is July of 2018, that's when we started our channel because mm-hmm. I had also experienced so many health benefits. My skin had cleared up. I had no more headaches. There was no more inflammation in my joints. And so I was like, we got to share this. We've got to talk about this. Right. And then, so that was a year ago, I was the same weight as I am now. Now, I think I've put on more muscle, mm-hmm. which is good. But I'm, I've maintained Right. And that's, eating a lot more than you used to and eat. That and was, they're good, healthy, fatty foods. I exactly. mean, you're eating bacon and eggs and burgers. And I mean, you went like three years without eating burgers. And that was something that like just was not possible right. in any other way of dieting. No matter if I was counting points or I was calorie restricting or whatever it was, you was you would always go through all of the seasons and have like a real yo-yo experience. And that's not the way on keto. So that's our weight loss journey, or that's like our history, like how we got into keto. Mm-hmm. And like, yeah, there's there's nobody that could ever convince me like to change unless there were some like serious, like backed up documented medical evidence that showed me like that I shouldn't be eating this way. And right now there is none. Well, and we... I mean, the bottom line is the keto diet's been around since like the 1920s. It's always been used for like epilepsy and stuff like that. So, yeah. And that's eating a lot less carbs than even we eat. Right. And um, we've had our blood check. We've been back to the doctor. Mm-hmm. You know, when we started to experience so much, you know, health benefits, I also asked my mom to join us yep. on that this journey. That was like the end of February of 2018. Yep. And I was like, just try it. Because my father had passed away of a massive heart attack that I know was preventable if he had changed his lifestyle. I did not want to lose my mom. And so I asked her to join us on this, and I was willing to have the fight with her. No, we both were. You know, to, to make that happen. And I don't even know how much weight that she has lost since then. I don't know. But we can show you a before and after. Size-wise, we'll show you the before and after pictures. is incredible. But more importantly, the weight is that she spent most of her adult life or the years. later year, 20 years as a type 2 diabetic and is no longer classified as a diabetic. That's and- Better to me than even the weight loss. Well, and that's, I think that's why I can't even tell you what the pounds is because I could care less. It's always ever concentrated on it. Like she's not taking all the diabetes medication anymore. And if you've ever been with someone who's a type 2 diabetic and you never knew when they were going to have like an, ins, you know, an insulin situation, we would be out shopping. All of a sudden she would like pass out or just feel, you know, uncomfortable, start crying, just that feeling of out of control. And then me worrying about her as a daughter that like she would be alone in her house and something happened and me not being able to get to her. Right was very Which is scary. now why, why, one of the reasons that we even had her moved like very close to us, like within yeah. a few houses of us. Yeah. So the fact that um, I have over, you know, as a much younger woman experienced stroke symptoms as a result of like my weight and stuff and to not have any of those things happen. Um, certainly a proud moment for us was when um, Caleb came to us and said, hey, it's senior year. I want to have the most mental clarity and feel the best that I can and do the best I can Um in my senior year, can you start making keto food for me? That was just, it was more confirmation that we were on the right track. Right. But we didn't want it to end with our kids. We wanted to help other people as well. So we started our YouTube channel a year ago, a year ago this month. I think the first video we put up was like July 31st. So this is coming up on a year. And we really started it. We it was really a joke between yeah. us. So it was a date day. We were getting ready to be empty nesters. Caleb was entering a senior year of high school. You know, our oldest, you know, has was finishing up his electrician stuff. You know, our middle son had just graduated high school, and we're like, wow, we're gonna have to figure something out. And we were trying to like figure out what can we do to be with each other. And what one is- day we're 
sitting around the house. We're like, let's make a YouTube channel. Yeah, because it was like, what is a common interest if, you know, we dated and we had kids. Right. So we knew we had to figure out, like, how we were going to, like, move forward. Like, what would we be interested in together that didn't have to have, like, every conversation talking about our children? Because we didn't know what it was like to be married without kids. No. Because we had never been married without kids. No. So we started, like, just impromptu. We made that video, which is the very first video on our channel. And, um... I don't know. We made like four or five videos. Yeah. And they weren't very good. I mean, yeah. I go back now and I look at them. I'm like, oh my gosh, I want to take them down so bad. They have like 50 views. I'm like, all like, oh, that's <laughs> us. And he's all cringy. And so we made we made a few videos. Not a lot. I think no more than 10 between the end of July and December. Yeah. And But then life got in the way, like, you know, football season and church and everything else. You know how it And goes. we did nothing with it. And then like in January of this year, we were like... Wow, like we just need to go full force with this because we need to be able to help people. And that's that is the heart behind two crazy ketos is helping people not experience what we experienced, mm-hmm. right? And and well, experience the good stuff that we experienced, but not experience all the bad stuff. I think for me what had happened was is that there was someone at our church who had kind of seen our results, you know, because they do life with us, right? They see us every week. And so they had just started doing it. And they had three young kids and they had like really great success with it. It's doing awesome still. And I thought, man, I wish that I had gotten healthier when I was younger and a young parent and that I could be a better mom even than than what I was. Like I wish I could go back and be more present because I wasn't hurting because I couldn't, you know, I could be able to fit on all the rides and do everything that I wanted to do, be able to chase after the kids like I would have wanted. So I'm like, how am I going to, you know, help more families? to have this experience where they can be the best grandmother they can be, the best aunt they could be, the best grandpa they could be, the best dad. You know, that's what I wanted to do. Right. So that's why we started Two Crazy Kitas. Just, it was to help people because we experienced so much success with the diet. And the bottom line is, I know I said it in my blog the other day, but the keto diet, the keto diet changed the trajectory of our lives. It really did. You know, I spent my entire life and t- telling Rachel I lost my father at the age of 64 to a brain tumor. My mother's had colon cancer. And I, I've always told Rachel, like, I don't plan on living past 65 years old. I just didn't think I would. Just, I, there's too many health issues in my family. And, like, now I've, I'm almost 49 years old. I feel like I'm 25. I feel like this is a new beginning for us. And I'm excited right. about where we're going to be. But it also, like, kind of is the reason why we are so passionate mm-hmm. about giving very, like, good information, educated information. And we do not want you to get tricked by companies that are trying to sell you something that may trigger, you know, past problems or or, or be any kind of obstacle to your keto lifestyle because, it's too important. Your health is too important. We don't want you to, to to eat something that you shouldn't eat and then feel the frustration when something becomes an obstacle Right, to which you. is why we do do so many review videos. We do a lot of review videos and we're always going to want to do a lot of review videos because first of all, when I got started on keto, there weren't any keto products out there. No. Like the, the biggest known like keto-friendly product was the Quest Bar and it's not very keto-friendly. It's like super high in protein. They were using at the time questionable fibers. Mm-hmm. And so we've always said we want to always do review videos and every product should get its own review so that we can really kind of break it down. And that's why we do that because we don't want people to make the same mistakes that we made. Well, I can say that we could probably thank Hellman's and Kraft for that kind was, of... That was the trigger for It was the trigger videos. because we were trying to get healthier by incorporating avocado mayonnaise into our diet. Right. And we were really excited. But, you know, we're, we're on a extreme budget you Mm -hmm. know so for us to say all right we're gonna buy mayonnaise and pay four or five more dollars a jar in order to get this mayonnaise that was a big deal for us that was an investment for us which again i want to say it's it is not required to do that that we started that well after we were doing keto for a long time and we can talk about that in a different video yeah but it was the case of i bought this mayonnaise thinking there was avocado oil in it right like that's why i bought it I w- I'd eaten other mayonnaise like the whole time and that was fine. But if I think I'm buying avocado mayonnaise, I want to be eating avocado mayonnaise. So we got home and I don't know what it was, but it was like halfway through the, the bottom, jar. Yeah. 
we look down and we're like the ingredients were canola like oil canola oil sunflower oil then avocado oil and i thought wait a second they tricked me right because i believed the little avocados on the front of this jar right and i trusted that they knew they know that i bought this thinking that it was an avocado mayonnaise not a blend Right. And I thought, oh my gosh, who else is out to trust, like to trick us? Right. I thought, you know, everybody wants to help you be your best self, right? You see that little honey nut Cheerio bee and he's like, you know, making a heart around grandpa that's eating these so that he'll live longer and be there with his grandkid. And I thought, wait a minute, what if that bee is not working for me? What if that bee could care less about my family and just wants my dollars? Right. And I thought, well, wow, if I could be tricked, other people could be tricked. And we want to avoid that. Right. Which is, again, why we do this channel. So the ketogenic lifestyle changed our life and we want to be able to give back to it. Mm -hmm. So we're going to continue to put up at least five new videos every single week. And people have asked us. Like, what can I do to help you guys grow? The best thing you guys can do to help us grow is hit the like button on every single video you watch and leave a comment because that has YouTube put us into more feeds. Another thing you can do to help us out is share this video and all of our videos and encourage your friends and family members to subscribe to our channel. Right, especially because you want them to get healthy as well. Exactly. So that is our video for today. Um, like I said, a lot of people have asked us to tell our story even though we already had one out there. I know it is buried at the bottom of our channel. But it's our keto anniversary. It's our keto anniversary. So, And it's a little bit of a longer video, but we really wanted to get all of the information to you. So hopefully it kind of helped you out. And again, like Rachel said, you know, share it with other people. Maybe it'll inspire somebody else to start getting their, their life in order and, and get a little bit healthy with their body. If you have other questions about us, like go ahead and put them in the comments down below. Mm -hmm. Send us an email at twocrazyketos at gmail.com or join our Facebook family group right. and let's get to know one another. Yeah, we have a lot of great people in the Facebook family group that like to just help people out and encourage people along. So They're the bestest people on earth. Yep. So if you like what you saw today, do us a favor, hit that like button down below. And don't forget to subscribe to our channel and hit the little bell icon and that way every single time we upload a new video, you'll be alerted to it. Until next time. Bye. bye.